American Communications Online. ACO is our brand and we now adopt ACOT for our technology. ACOT Pro is our marketing plan website into 2022. American Communications Online is owned and managed by Teresa J. Morris. UFO Association and ACO Association Stories. We write history and keep archived information where we find it. We thank Barry Greenwood and Jan Aldrich for all the work they do to record information for all our UFO Association associates who we hope will keep a major database of filed. For now, We are told the University of Mexico is willing to take the files if we can scan all the information into a proper form and many independent ufologists are at least coming forth and allowing us to know the most popular names of who wanted to get their information scanned and into the computer databases of memories. I am willing as a correspondent and in retirement to assist others who are archiving information on their own old files or clippings from newspapers. Please let us know if you can help as a content manager or provider so we can keep the history of those who came before us. This is July 2021. We begin oral archives again in August 2021. Thurmond Morris began with this information prior to becoming Teresa J. Thomas and Teresa J. Morris. TJ began in 1977 to 1980 while at University of Alabama in Birmingham and using typewriters and grew into a Capro first laptop carry-on a plane used in 1985-1986 at Great Lakes, Illinois. History of growth in her life began with network solutions and engineering in U.S. Navy, NAVFACPACCOM, Pearl Harbor, Hawaii. Intelligence Community Workforce and Leadership. ACIR was created with that accounts from 1987 in Great Lakes, Waukegan, Illinois and flew to Washington, D.C. as a rehire on May 10, 1987, after a 20-year on paper from Houston, Government Office of Personnel Management and NASA. 1975-1976 Intelligence Concerns and Teresa J. Thurmond was picked up by Navy Van from Dallas and taken to serve at Balboa Hospital and China Lake Facility. Later met J. Allen Hynek for guidelines on a new contract to resume in 1985 for Intelligence Community for possible Center of UFO Studies. CUFOS. July 27, 2021 Welcome to the J. Allen Hynek Center for UFO Studies The Center for UFO Studies, CUFOS, is an international group of scientists, academics, investigators, and volunteers dedicated to the continuing examination and analysis of the UFO phenomenon. Our purpose is to promote serious scientific interest in UFOs and their study, and to serve as an archive for reports, documents, and publications about the UFO phenomenon. We have provided an extensive set of resources on this site to help you learn about the UFO phenomenon, for beginners and for those seeking more in-depth information. Become Involved CUFOS does not have members, but you can become involved in our work. We encourage you to become involved in CUFOS activities, which can include archival work, assistance with our UFOCAT database, historical case research, current research in both the physical and social sciences on various types of UFO reports, or statistical analysis of sighting data. To volunteer your assistance, contact us at infocenter at qfos.org. More information for more information about the Center for UFO Studies that you can't find on these pages, or for comments and suggestions about our site, contact us at infocenter at qfos.org. The beginning of the mystery of UFOs was, for me at least, on a sunny summer day in Barron, Wisconsin, in 1934, Coral Lorenzen wrote in her 1966 book Flying Sources, The Startling Evidence of the Invasion from Outer Space. She was just nine years old when she and two friends watched an object she described looking like an open umbrella without the ribs or spurs glide silently through the sky and vanish over the horizon. Barron in 1934 was a small town of about 1500 population. Airliners were rarely if ever seen, it would be safe to say weather balloons were never seen and, indeed, even a small monoplane was an event in that area. The thing was in the west-southwest when I first noticed it. I called it to the attention of my two playmates, and one said she thought it was a parachute. Its color was a glowing white. The object was about as large as a dime held at arm's length. There were no ropes or lines suspended from it, 
and, therefore, no parachutist. It made no sound as it wobbled in a northwest direction across the clear, cloudless sky. It wasn't going fast, rather, it was poking along at a leisurely rate of speed and with a rather strange motion, that has been described in recent reports as undulating. We watched the object for perhaps 20 seconds. Then it appeared to go over the horizon, or perhaps it came to rest north of Barron in the vicinity of a body of water referred to locally as the Upper Dam. I went home and told my father, who made inquiries, and the matter was dropped. No one had seen the object we three children had watched, and there was no news of a parachutist landing north of the dam. Coral's sighting predated the 1947 Roswell crash and the resulting UFO flap by 13 years. Jim and Coral Lorenzen at APRO headquarters, 1955 Aerial Phenomena Research Organization 1952 was a busy year for UFO sightings. And as quickly as the reports were coming in, the U.S. Air Force's Project Grudge, later Project Blue Book, was dismissing them with what many believed to be poor investigations and worse explanations. Coral, still captivated by what she saw years earlier, realized there needed to be an organized way that amateur researchers could investigate UFO sightings and exchange information. In January of 1952 she and her husband Jim founded the Aerial Phenomena Research Organization, APRO, the first group of its kind. In the 1972 book The UFO Experience, a scientific inquiry, J. Allen Hynek wrote that while APRO had among its number members who were overenthusiastic and uncritical persons enamored of the idea of UFOs, he stated that it was not a crackpot organization. APRO had many serious members, many of whom have considerable technical and scientific training. The Lorenzans were living in Sturgeon Bay when they launched APRO, and Coral soon found herself in the perfect position to track down information on local sightings. In the fall of 1952 I started doing news correspondent work and feature writing for the Green Bay Press Gazette, Coral wrote, and con not sequently I met a lot of people who were of great assistance to me in tracking down early, unpublished sightings in Wiss not Conson. Coral recorded numerous strange occurrences, including a number of brightly lit objects moving in formation over a minister's farm in 1910, and a silver globe-shaped object with light emanating from within witnessed over Lake Michigan by an Algoma resident. Coral dedicated her life to UFO research. She experienced several sightings during her life, including the Sturgeon Bay Flying Saucer. But that first time in 1934 never left her. There was only one explanation for the thing I had seen, Coral wrote of her first sighting over Barron. There might be intelligent life on other worlds, and their ships were the strange things people had reported in the heavens from time to time through the years. Coral's enthusiasm for the truth forever changed the way UFO reports were investigated, as the roots of today's modern UFO research groups can be traced back to APRO. In 1969, APRO members started the Midwest UFO Network, now known as the Mutual UFO Network. Among those to break away from APRO was Alan Utka, Associate Professor of Chemistry at Wisconsin State University, who became the first director of MUFON. The group is still active today, with chapters in every state, some 3,000 members, and more than 390 field investigators actively investigating reports of unidentified flying objects. Jim and Coral Lorenzen at APRO headquarters in Tucson, late 1960s the Lorenzans eventually moved to Arizona, where Jim spent some time working as an electronics technician at Holloman Air Force Base. Jim passed away in 1986. APRO remained active until Coral's death two years later in 1988. History known for working with entrepreneurs and computers, and contractors. Network Solutions, an engineering company, is founded by Emmett J. McHenry, an Arkansas-born entrepreneur. The Tyson's Corner, VA office had 30 employees. 1979, we win a five-year contract with National Science Foundation to register domain names and become sole registry for .com, .net, .org and .edu domains. At this point domain names were free, and the NSF paid Network Solutions to register and administer them. Network Solutions was the only company to bid on the NSF contract. 1993, 
the National Science Foundation gives us permission to charge a fee for registering domain names. Domain registrations are processed manually, and customers receive a paper invoice. Some customers send checks without a reference to the invoice or domain name, so their checks sit in a box in the finance department. The registration fee is $100 for two years. 30% of the registration fees go into Intellectual Infrastructure Fund. The government directs the expenditure from the fund. 1995, 1997, the number of domains registered reaches 1 million. We throw a party. 1998, the first track of the ICANN History Project is integral to ICANN's formation, specifically the relationship between the U.S. government and ICANN. ICANN grew out of a 1998 commitment from the U.S. government to transfer the management of the domain name system to a new non-profit corporation based in the U.S. with global participation. This track, however, begins long before ICANN was established and continues to the present day. Check out the timeline, interviews, and resources to learn more about the U.S. government's role in the establishment and development of ICANN, to explore the evolution of their relationship, and to discover the steps leading up to the IANA stewardship transition. 1999, registration of .com, .net, .edu and .org is open to competition. Network Solutions acquires Image Cafe, a website design company. Customers can now build a website for their domain name using the Image Cafe website builder tool. 2,000 domains in the Network Solutions registry total 5 million as a decade of growth begins. 2003 Terra Jewels learns of Starfield Technologies with breaking off from GoDaddy. Network Solutions becomes a privately held company, operating as Network Solutions, LLC. 2004 Network Solutions launches private domain registration. Enhanced backorder services give customers the ability to place requests for currently registered domains or to get rid of domain registrations they no longer want or need. Readdress website builders with. Teresa J. Morris has been married now since March 8, 2000, and has kept website building and developing between Network Solutions and GoDaddy. Final decision after six years since 1998 to go between Network Solutions and Wild West to find GoDaddy and combined her three accounts. 2005 By introducing a new generation of web hosting packages, Network Solutions gives customers more options for reliable website hosting. We receive better Business Bureau accreditation. Today we have a BBB rating of A+. 2006 We strengthen our product portfolio by adding a robust suite of new services including e-commerce solutions, web design and search engine optimization services. After a multi-year restructuring of customer service, Network Solutions is recognized for providing an outstanding customer service experience by becoming a JD Power and Associates certified call center. We also become an authorized Google AdWords reseller. Businesses working with an authorized reseller receive professional, full-service AdWords account management, from account setup and activation to ongoing campaign monitoring and optimization, and quality customer support. 2007 we become a Microsoft Gold Certified Partner, meaning that we have a demonstrated level of technical expertise and the proven ability to deliver solutions featuring Microsoft products. 2009 Network Solutions helps businesses target local customers online with local search visibility, aimed at bringing traffic and calls to their physical locations. Teresa J. Morris begins her timely manner imprint for TJ Morris publishing online with her websites since 2004 with TJ Morris, ACIR, ACO, ACIT, ACOT brands for Made in USA. 2010 Domain Storm, our new mobile app, helps customers brainstorm and register a domain by entering a keyword and shaking their phone. We begin sharing information on various websites and begin sharing radio shows in 2012. 2003 through 2012 were written only plus video trailers on YouTube.com. We began not only articles of ufology but meeting people we liked in metaphysics and paranormal 2012 to 2021. We share UFO Association organization with CUFOS and Barry Greenwood, Jan Aldrich, and other ufologists now. 
Jim and Coral Lorenzen at APRO headquarters, 1955 Aerial Phenomena Research Organization 1952 was a busy year for UFO sightings. And as quickly as the reports were coming in, the U.S. Air Force's Project Grudge, later Project Blue Book, was dismissing them with what many believed to be poor investigations and worse explanations. Coral, still captivated by what she saw years earlier, realized there needed to be an organized way that amateur researchers could investigate UFO sightings and exchange information. In January of 1952 she and her husband Jim founded the Aerial Phenomena Research Organization, APRO, the first group of its kind. In the 1972 book The UFO Experience, a scientific inquiry, J. Allen Hynek wrote that while APRO had among its number members who were over-enthusiastic and uncritical persons enamored of the idea of UFOs, he stated that it was not a crackpot organization. APRO had many serious members, many of whom have considerable technical and scientific training. The Lorenzans were living in Sturgeon Bay when they launched APRO, and Coral soon found herself in the perfect position to track down information on local sightings. In the fall of 1952 I started doing news correspondent work and feature writing for the Green Bay Press Gazette, Coral wrote, and con not sequently I met a lot of people who were of great assistance to me in tracking down early, unpublished sightings in Wis not Consen. Coral recorded numerous strange occurrences, including a number of brightly lit objects moving in formation over a minister's farm in 1910, and a silver globe-shaped object with light emanating from within witnessed over Lake Michigan by an Algoma resident. Coral dedicated her life to UFO research. She experienced several sightings during her life, including the Sturgeon Bay Flying Saucer. But that first time in 1934 never left her. There was only one explanation for the thing I had seen, Coral wrote of her first sighting over Baron. There might be intelligent life on other worlds, and their ships were the strange things people had reported in the heavens from time to time through the years. Coral's enthusiasm for the truth forever changed the way UFO reports were investigated, as the roots of today's modern UFO research groups can be traced back to APRO. In 1969, APRO members started the Midwest UFO Network, now known as the Mutual UFO Network. Among those to break away from APRO was Alan Utka, Associate Professor of Chemistry at Wisconsin State University, who became the first director of MUFON. The group is still active today, with chapters in every state, some 3,000 members, and more than 390 field investigators actively investigating reports of unidentified flying objects. Jim and Coral Lorenzen at APRO headquarters in Tucson, late 1960s The Lorenzans eventually moved to Arizona, where Jim spent some time working as an electronics technician at Holloman Air Force Base. Jim passed away in 1986. APRO remained active until Coral's death two years later in 1988. Jan Aldrich has been sharing information as a UFOLOGIST since retirement from the United States government with 50 years experience. Jan Aldrich is solely responsible for the project 1947. Hear radio shows of Jan Aldrich on TJ Morris ET radio shows on http colon slash slash blog talk radio.com slash TJ Morris Radio. Teresa J. Thurmond was recruited in 1985 and 1986 by CUFOS J. Allen Hynek before his office in Chicago was moving to Denver, Colorado. TJ and J. Allen Hynek met at Lowry Air Force Base in 1985 and on a jet towards Edwards Air Force Base in 1986, where he asked Teresa to make sure we could continue CUFOS and our UFO Association of Ufologists. Project 1947 Project 1947 is a worldwide effort to document the origins of the modern UFO phenomenon. Research for the project has yielded many early-era UFO reports via the FOIA, newspaper articles and contemporary accounts. Some of the material gathered by Project 1947 is on display here. Project 1947 is always looking for volunteers to help continue the search for new UFO documents and help process them for the published Project 1947 volumes. Please read the Project 1947 information letter and contact the Project 1947 coordinator, Jan Aldrich, if you have any questions.
to enable researchers from around the world to network, exchange documents, and provide information about new FOIA releases of UFO-related materials, Project 1947 operates a computer mailing list. Volunteers assisting the project are given automatic membership to the list. Please mail the list master for details. Project 1947 is an attempt to enhance the future of UFO research by establishing a solid collection of official UFO documents, newspaper articles and personal accounts from the beginning of the modern UFO era. The first volume of material collected by Project 1947 has been published by the UFO Research Coalition as Project 1947, a preliminary report. An extensive collection of 1947 UFO reports and newspaper accounts from the USA is supplemented by a compilation of significant sightings from Scandinavia, France, Australia, and other countries. By compiling a definitive history to show how we got here from there, the way to future UFO research projects and FOIA requests will become much clearer. Persons interested in aiding the project are always welcome. Blank. Teresa has been involved with growth on the internet highway and cyberspace cultured actively since 1998. She began with Net Solutions and GoDaddy. A reseller, affiliate, and finally hosting websites direct. Starfield Technologies offered more.